My name is Attila Novoselak. I am professor in civil architectural and environmental engineering at University of Texas at Austin. I have been uh, looking mostly how the building uh, performance affects uh, uh, microbiology of built environment uh, and now chemistry of built environment. I was very lucky uh, to be part of a team which uh, looked how the microbiology of built environment evolved with uh, urbanization. And uh, in order to find uh, communities and homes uh, which didn't change for the last 2,000 years, uh, I've been involved in projects uh, getting uh, into some very, very uh, rural communities in the jungle, specifically Amazon uh, jungle, communities which live uh, like uh, in Stone Age, more or less. Uh, and uh, that was quite exciting because I had uh, a chance to uh, work in homes which are ancient uh, and uh, practically there was not a lot of home actually there. Uh, there was just a hut. <laughs> so, but they, quite interesting surfaces uh, are, are very important in those homes and they are driving this microbiology of built environment. Homes in jungle didn't change quite a lot in the sense of pollutant dispersion and ventilation. All homes which we studied were naturally ventilated. They have, thanks to the climate, uh, quite large uh, ventilation flow rate. And uh, just considering uh, what is in the air, what, whatever you find outside was inside. We had quite large dilution. What we found out is that surfaces are much more important. However, that's not the case here in the US because uh, the major difference in the home which we studied in jungle are large ventilation flow rate. Uh, the minimum ventilation flow rate there was uh, 4 uh, to 100 because they're all open to the outside environment. Uh, here, that's not the case. We close our environments uh, really, really because we want to thermally uh, isolate uh, from outside environment. And we're um, using mechanical ventilation, significant difference. In that study in, in Amazon, I find one, one important thing. They're using natural ventilation quite a lot because they're living in a climate where they can do that. And uh, I think that's a great thing. The problem with, with the homes which we studied in, in jungle, and we, we moved from this really primitive huts to something multi-million mansions of bankers, uh, is that uh, in these new homes, they're mixing natural and mechanical uh, systems and the problem came when, when they're trying to walk away from their traditional way of operating their homes. And they tried to adopt Western type of uh, building construction uh, and operation of buildings, and they're mixing with the opening and closing windows. So practically one of the worst, not air quality, but moisture problems, we didn't see in jungle. Those homes are built, they're not very long lasting because they're moving, they're, they're, they're pretty much communities are moving every 20 years to new location. But rottening we saw in the new construction homes. It was driven by wrong, really, adaptation of, of new technologies. And uh, pretty much uh, when they run AC overnight, and then uh, they open in the morning all the windows uh, and, and doors to, to bring this fresh air, which, which is great, but not so great if it hits cold surfaces and you have liquid dripping from, from, from your ceilings and the walls. In order to solve one set of problems associated with thermal comfort, we generated a whole variety of other problems, which is enclosing our environments and isolating ourselves from outside environment. Uh, so we have to do that because we have to still acknowledge that heat stroke is one of the largest killer. And we should control our environments and have thermal comfort in our homes. But the scary part is that very often we are used as a guinea pigs uh, because we're using certain products till we figure out that it is really harmful for us. And then we replace that product with something else, which we don't know yet how harmful it is. Home chemistry will raise awareness that we need to better control what is in certain products. And not just what is in certain products, but how those products react with, with our environment. The scary part is the, the fact that we don't know a lot.